What I'm going to talk about today is how we leave our mark on this world. Do you let people, how do you let people in the future know that you existed, that you left a unique presence specific to you, and that somehow you made a difference? We all fear being forgotten, and yet when it comes trying to stand out, when it comes time to, to stand out, we are struck with fear. Fear of being judged, because in our eyes, people see us now how, how they'll remember us forever. So better for them to remember you as quiet and normal versus loud and irrational, right? So let me give you a little hint. People don't really care, and they have very short memories, which is ironic given that people are the ones who will carry your story forward long after you're gone. Well, what I mean is, but your first impression isn't your only impression. Five seconds of embarrassment doesn't taint a lifetime of work. You'll never know what others will think of your mark on this planet as being, so why not throw something against a wall and see if it sticks? So whether today or in ancient times, folks have always enjoyed proudly leaving their marks, however slight, on walls for all to see using graffiti leaving some random thought of yours in spray paint on a railroad viaduct or scratched into a wall, takes some guts to do. You're defacing property, which is most likely illegal, I think. So buried in 79 AD, the walls of the ruins of Pompeii, Italy are full of graffiti. There's even one that states, oh walls, you have held so much tedious graffiti that I'm amazed that you have not already collapsed in ruin. Because it's written in Latin and looks kind of elegant, one might think that these might record profound thoughts or ideas. Rather, they frequently, they, they frequently feature more common boasts about gladiators, what someone's bar tab might be, or extremely rude thoughts about the, the opposite sex. You can just picture some guy in some bar in 70 AD thinking, screw it, I'm gonna let everybody know what I think of my boss by scratching it into this wall. Surely whoever wrote this graffiti never thought that his random scribbling would be part of a discussion here 2,000 years later, but it is. So it turns out people are the same, no matter what the era, and their desire to be heard by others, to be validated and remembered, and echo, it echoes across the, the centuries all the same. It was an initial trip to Europe in the late 1990s why I even know about this fabulous ancient graffiti. Unlike in the States where you have to make a concerted effort to find something 300 years old, in Europe you can practically trip over something that might be thousands of years old. As a creative in the advertising world, this trip really opened my eyes, fired up my imagination, and fueled a passion for ancient history that continues to this day. To me, the most interesting artifacts are the ones that show a bit of the personality of someone that existed so long ago. A glimpse into a particular person's character, just like that guy's complaint, which actually translates into the phrase, the boss isn't worth a rat's ass, because I've actually found that. The mediums change, but the window to the soul that art provides doesn't. And say what you will, but some ancient mediums are built to last. During my first visit to Pompeii, I remember a tour guide pointing out a floor mosaic that had been done, obviously, prior to the eruption, and saying, glass and marble don't fade. So that art looks essentially like the artist intended. That idea simply blew me away, an artist's life versus his work's life. So as you can see by this chart that I spent a tremendous amount of time on, <laughs> it's not even a contest. That longevity concept really resonated with me. I fell in love with the idea of capturing thoughts all my own with these tiny pieces of glass and marble that theoretically would allow folks many years from now to get an idea as to who I was. I was making an effort, however minor, to leave more evidence of my personality for people once I was no longer here. In this one part of my life, I was going to zig while everyone else was zagging. I was going to pursue this tedious, expensive, and difficult to master technique. 
would friends of mine think it was odd for me to take up this art form that they might associate their moms doing? Maybe, but it was in so deep I simply didn't care. And that Japanese, the old Japanese phrase comes to mind about being the tallest nail and that being the first one that gets hit. And I just hoped I wasn't going to be that particular nail. So now how did I go from producing pieces like this to producing pieces like this? Well, back in 2013, we had a very bad pothole season here in Chicago. Our street on the far northwest side of the city was hit particularly hard. Kenton Avenue was like a minefield. Occasionally repaired by the city, these fixes never really seemed to last for very long because in a few months, that same pothole repair crew would be back shoveling hot, steaming asphalt into these resilient holes. Over the course of the winter, though, I noticed that there was this one pothole in front of our house that just refused to stay fixed. Back in my studio in the basement of our house, just a couple of dozen yards away from that pothole, it dawned on me. I had this passion for this ancient art form that had incredible staying power, so durable and permanent. And I also had this problem outside of my house that just refused to stay fixed. So why not use this passion of mine to solve this problem of ours? But then the doubts kick in. Was this really a smart idea? Probably not. Was it even legal to do? I wasn't sure. <laughs> At the time, I was a 49-year-old dad with twin seven-year-old boys. And I was just too old to be getting arrested for something as ridiculous as this. <laughs> what kind of example would that set? I imagine my boys having conversations at school. My dad is a fireman. My dad is a doctor. What does your dad do? My dad fills potholes with artwork <laughs> at night. <laughs> Even my skittish wife liked to say she had bail money on the ready, ready to go in case I got into trouble. So then I thought, you know, what was the worst thing that could possibly happen? After weighing the pros and cons, I forged ahead. With Ray, my 86-year-old next-door neighbor, as my lookout, I installed this one mid-May night. The design of this initial piece was kind of a call to ownership for the community to embrace the issue we all have to deal with in a somewhat ridiculous fashion. Featuring the city's iconic flag and blaring the obvious, pothole, this was my attempt to brand the problem of ours in an authentic, in-your-face, Chicago-style manner. Once the artwork was installed, those doubts crept back in. I had just landed a, uh, a big uh, commission with the CTA, and I was worried about getting in trouble. Uh, perhaps they could even somehow take the job away from me. So and I did, certainly didn't want to draw any attention to my new art installation. I discouraged friends from posting it on social media or calling the newspapers. So it sat there for months, occasionally noticed by neighbors. Then I installed another one a few blocks away, also under the cover of darkness. Uh, Learning valuable lessons along the way, such as needing to protect the artwork from, as the mortar was drying, because otherwise cars would simply destroy it as they drove over it. Trying to solve this problem with my boys' soccer cones wasn't a good idea either, as they were just too wispy and would end up getting crushed. Eventually, though, my cover was blown, by a friend of mine who just wouldn't listen. He decided to take matters into his own hands and started calling local, newspaper, uh, calling local TV uh, stations and newspapers. One of these calls resulted in Fox News Chicago asking me to install a piece during three live remotes over one January morning in 2014 in 14 degree weather. It's funny, once I saw the glare of the TV lights, I suddenly threw away all my concerns about being found out. Instead. <laughs> Instead of doing these installations in the street at night, I started doing them during the day because people didn't care what I was doing. They had their own things going on in their lives. Despite being in the street at night, working on a pothole for way too long, people walked by without questioning anything. <laughs> once, I began installing, once I began installing during the day, I had the same experience. Nobody cared. I had, the time of the installations was a direct reflection of my confidence in this little guerrilla art campaign of mine. Going from hiding in the darkness, unsure of the validity of this exercise, to almost flaunting it in broad daylight, brimming with confidence. Eventually, though, people did start to notice what I was doing. The, the campaign started to get a little traction. Words of encouragement and praise were yelled out from people as they walked by. 
people began to care, and the campaigns of the artwork began to reflect this new dynamic. One thing I, I, I love to do with these things is juxtapose what I call universal truths, things people love or hate. Everybody loves, or everybody, I should say, hates potholes. Kind of like cancer, you'd be hard pressed to find someone that likes them. I've heard from people all over the world after, after this campaign caught on. Anyone can relate to it, no matter if you're rich or poor, young or old, Canadian or Brazilian. In the same way, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find someone that doesn't like flowers or ice cream. This positive, this campaign of positive icons in a place where you'd least expect it is what really caught the public's imagination. I like to think of it as putting on a little unexpected grin on a stranger's face on their otherwise typical day. Folks took ownership of them as if they were local landmarks, probably saying things like, I live right down the street from the ice cream sandwich. So it was only, so not only was I imparting my character out there in, in an atypical, more permanent way, people were climbing on board and supporting the idea. And because of it, the story, not just the piece, was getting preserved. Through this team effort, this attempt at legacy gained traction in ways I could have never dreamt. And these communities, communities have only become more invested in my quest over time. Without exaggeration, 99.9% .9 of the reactions I've received have been positive. It's been a humbling experience. I've had coffee and danishes dropped off while I worked on cold mornings. Others have supplied lemonade and ice water on hot summer afternoons. People want to help and be part of the experience of beautifying their street just a little bit. Even the cops stop by it sometimes. A couple of years ago, I turned to the Kickstarter community to try and help and finance these art installations. In 2015, I was looking for a modest $300, and I, was, and I pulled in over $4,500. Last year, I asked for $1,000, and with help from strangers and friends and family, I pulled in over $15,000. So who knows where this will lead in the future? But probably the epitome of this team effort came from Uvascula, Finland. In May of 2015, I was invited to be the resident street artist for their end of winter festival. And I installed six pieces during my visit there, three of them commissioned by the city's government. And I kid you not, they actually dug custom potholes for me. <laughs> they literally asked me for ideal specs on what my perfect pothole was, and then dug them where they saw fit, including in front of the town's museum. About a year later, I received an email from the gallery that had invited me out there. They wanted to share a story about one of the pothole installations and how the community became involved when the artwork was threatened with destruction. Apparently, a street where one of the pieces was located was being repaved. And thus, the flaw in my permanence and my concept of permanence became clear. The mosaics can be practically indestructible, but the street around it, not so much. So this happens a lot in the States, all the time, actually, where most of my uh, work is located. Whenever the road needs repaving or is damaged, my piece, part of my personality, simply goes away, never to be heard or seen from again, except in photographs, unless you're in Uvascula. The repaving crew over there actually took pains to extract the artwork before doing any work on the street. Once the street was repaved, they dug a fresh hole for the mosaic and reinstalled it. This whole pothole art installation project began on a whim. I didn't think this is something everyone could relate to and they'll think it's so clever. Rather, it was something I could relate to, rethinking something no one ever really thought about, that sad little pothole outside my house that refused to stay fixed, which sounds a little like a children's storybook. Zigging while everyone else was zagging. I thought it was kind of funny and unexpected. If others did, great. But it wasn't really, that wasn't really my plan. If I would have worried about what others thought about the project, it might not have ever got off the ground. Even if every trace of Pato art disappears, the idea of making your mark in this world can live on in people's minds indefinitely. The beautiful thing about this whole movement is that it wasn't promoted by me at all. Others did it for me, the community. And the only reason it was successful has staying power, and why I'm even in front of you today is that the community got behind the idea. It resonated with them, not just locally, but the worldwide community as well. It took a team effort to give the idea life. 
and it'll take the community to keep it alive. Without this support, there's an excellent chance the pothole installation project and my shot at permanence might not have ever happened and gone away with little fanfare. Ultimately though, when it comes to legacy, why cliche, sometimes you do need to follow your gut. People can be judgmental. Time is not, excuse me, time is not. Things will work out or they won't. So how do you want to be remembered? No one can start to tell your story better than you. Why stay silent? Thank you.